Hi, it's Corrine, and recently I shared a mini album I made using a digital paper collection from Knitwit Collections. I received lots of feedback on that video, along with lots of questions, which I did my best to answer every question, but I thought I'd do a more in-depth video showing different ways you can use a digital kit, along with the process of purchasing and downloading one. I like using digital in a physical form, meaning printing them out and making something with it, for example, a mini album, a card, or a scrapbook album, but you can certainly use them strictly in a digital form if that's what you like to do. So first, let's start with a question I receive quite often. What type of printer and paper do I use? I use a Canon Pigsma 512 3-in-1. This was an inexpensive printer and I like the results that I received from it. It's not the best printer out there by no means, but part of my decision to purchase the printer was when I considered ink replacement. The ink is not expensive to replace and I get it from Amazon. Also, when I recently made the mini album that I showed, I started out with a warning on my printer that I was low in color ink and that it needed to be replaced. Well, I was able to print out all the papers tons of elements, mats, journaling cards, etc. in high resolution and I still never had to replace it. I was able to complete that entire mini album still with my uh, printer stating that it needed you know the color to be replaced. So therefore it takes a lot less ink than you think it does. Now if I have that warning on I make sure I have some ink in hand so I can replace it you know if it completely runs out but like I said I didn't need to do that um, until recently I was working on something different. The second question I get a lot is what paper I use. My go-to paper is the Georgia Pacific from Walmart. It's a smooth white cardstock, 110 pound, and it can be found in the section where they sell copy paper. When printing out on this, you'll get great results. You'll get um, results of stuff that you would buy in the store because it's a thicker paper, which makes it easy to work with. You do not want to use regular copy paper. You need something you know, thicker. Um, and I use this paper for everything. I use it for card bases as well. It's inexpensive and it's good paper to have, have on hand. So now let's head over to Knitwit Collections to walk through the process of downloading a paper collection. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is go to knitwitcollections.com. I'll have a link in the description box below along with a 20% off coupon that's good through March 31st of 2016, I believe. Double check the um, description box for the information on that. And when you purchase one of their paper packs, you're going to receive the paper back in high resolution. So it's 300 DPI are the images, and the papers are JPEG files, and the elements are PNG files, which preserve any transparent areas, say, when you're working in Photoshop. And by the way, you can work with their digital papers in any program that you like. You can work in Photoshop, Word, Paint. You can even work in Silhouette Design Studio, even if you don't own a Cameo. Their Design Studio software is free from SilhouetteAmerica.com. So everything that I'm going to show you that you can do using the Silhouette Design software, you can still do that and just print out your papers and fussy cut them out. So let me just show you um, here, they have different type of paper packs. So what the first thing that they have is the bundled collection and that's gonna be all your papers and all your elements. To break that down a little bit further, you can, if you did not want the full collection, you can order what they call the alpha wit and every collection has these. So the alpha wit is alphabet, numbers, and then some punctuation. You can order just the solids from a collection, and usually their solids still have somewhat of a decoration, but they're a great background paper. You can order the two collections. So right here is the Time for Tea Cottage 2, and that's going to be more pattern paper than the original pack, which is the FB. FBQ, which stands for Fat Quarter Bundles. You're going to get pattern papers and elements in these, and you will not get duplicates on any of the papers. So if you bought all the different collections, none of them are going to be duplicates. You will also get, or you can also order little bits, which are just um, 
the elements that go with the paper collection. So just to reiterate, the bundled collection includes all of the stuff together. And I believe when you buy it in the bundled collection, you save like 20%. So again, you'll get all the papers, all the elements, all the alphabets, numbers, etc. So when you want to purchase a kit, if you know what you want, I'm going to type in what I'm going to get today to show you how we download them. They have tons to choose from, adorable collections. So I'm going to select on the bundled on Knitwit Pond collection. And I'm going to add to cart. It's showing me here what I will get. So I'm going to go to checkout. Now I have previously registered an account with them. You want to do that ahead of time. And now if you have a um, coupon like the coupon that they're offering for the 20%, you want to type in your coupon under where it says maintenance coupon and that will give you your discount. I'm going And now it shows me that I've received my discount coupon. Confirm the order. You would use your PayPal or however you want to pay. And then it gives you your order number. So now what you want to do, here are all your downloads. So there are five downloads. You just simply want to click on each one of them. And as you can see at the bottom left here, it's starting to download. So I'm going to click on each one of them until I see that they're starting to download. So there are all five of mine. I'm going to give these a few minutes to download and I'll be right back. Okay, so now most of these are already downloaded. This one has a few minutes left, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to go to where my download folder is. And here are four of the five files. This one's still uploading so or downloading. So I'm going to just start with the first one. I'm right clicking, selecting Extract All. I'm going to select Extract. And now it will automatically open up the file once it's been extracted. So you want to double click on this. And here are some of my elements. So I'm going to leave those there for a moment. I'm going to head over to my silhouette and you want to go into your library and make a file for these. So I have a file called Knitwit Collections and inside that file I have, I will have all my different paper packs. So while the Knitwit Collections, and the reason I have the number one, two, and three is I want those to come up first so they're easy to access for me. So under Knitwit Collections, I want to go up to the top here and select New Folder. You can also right click and do that as well. And now I want to name it. I'm going to put a number four again just to keep it, or actually I'm going to do a number one on Knitwit Pond and then select Enter. The next thing I want to do is go back to this one here on Knitwit Pond. And while on it, I'm going to select new folder again, and I'm going to name it the exact same thing, except I'm going to add elements on Knitwit Pond elements. You can keep them all together or keep them separate, however you want to do it. So here are my two folders. So while this is highlighted, this is going to be my elements. I'm going to leave this open, go back to where my downloads are, and I'm going to select my downloads by holding shift, I'm highlighting all of them. Being that there's not a ton of them, I am not going to worry about it. I'm just going to drag them over. If you have too many, it could cause your, your computer to freeze up so or your program to freeze up. Now I'm simply dragging them to there and dropping them. And it told me there's 26 files. So in a moment, once it's done, it should say 26 files at the bottom. This looks like it's going to be an adorable set. Okay, so there's 26. So now we can go back to this and close that. 
I want to go back to where my files are being downloaded and I'm going to do the next one, the exact same thing. I'm going to right click, hit extract all, select extract. And now I'm going to double click to open this and here are some of my solid papers. So again, you don't want to do too many at a time. I'm going to um, take about five of them at once, but I need to go back to my silhouette and open up the Unknit Wood Pond. This is where I like to keep my papers separate. That's just your choice, whatever you want to do. So now that I have that open, I can drag them and drop them right into the folder. This takes just a few minutes longer. I'm going to give it time to go ahead and lo load them. You don't want to, um, you know, start anything else. So now I'm double checking. I have five there. I'm going to go back and the five that I've already done is still highlighted. So I'm going to grab the other three and drag those and drop them. Okay, so now I have eight files. Those are done. So I'm going to close that one down, go back to my downloads and do the same thing. So I'm going to select extract all. Another thing while I'm here that I want to tell you is when I'm done doing all this, I also save these paper packs in a separate document folder and I also save them on an external hard drive. That way, if anything ever happens to your computer, you're not wasting um, any purchases that you've made. Okay, so this should open up, double click on it. And now here is where you get a lot of elements and papers. I am not going to do too many at a time. I'm going to do the, the elements in the paper separate. I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did. So I will be back once I've uh, transferred all of those over. Okay, so I've transferred all my papers and my elements into my Silhouette Studio. And again, I did save them in a separate file. That way, if I want to work on them in Photoshop or Word, whatever, I have the choice to. And I just want to mention one more time that you do not need to own a Cameo to download this Silhouette Design Studio. You can download it from Silhouette America, do everything that I am doing on here, and just simply print them out. I like to use my Cameo to cut them out, and I know you can do that with a Cricut and other die cutting machines as well. I only work with the Cameo, so that's really all I can speak of. But there are several times that I like to print stuff out, and if we're in going to be in a long car ride or something, I take them with me and fussy cut them out. So that's a great option. Put a movie on and fussy cut them out as well if you'd like. Um, the, here are my pattern papers. As you can see, it shows I have 49 pattern papers. And some of the patterns will be the same. However, they will be different colors. So whatever color scheme you want to work with, you can work with. I like that they give you the option. And as you can see, you get lots and lots to choose from. So let me go over to my elements here. And look how adorable. Mary Fran does such, she is such a great designer. I love these frogs. They have turtles. I, the mushrooms I absolutely love. Here are the numbers and the alphabet and some punctuation. So as you can see, um, that all comes with the bundle pack. Oh, I love the turtles. And then there's lots of sentiments to choose from. So I am going to go over to my mat here and I'm going to show you different things that you can do with the Cameo. I'm going to do this in parts, so each part you'll probably see me start out with a blank screen. I'm just, it's going to be easier for editing for me for that way. But the very first thing that I like to do is say I'm working on a mini album. The first thing I like to do is put out a square or whatever size mini album that I'm working on. So I'm going over to my scale window. I'm un checking the lock aspect box and I'm putting in five by five. That's going to give me a five by five square if, if that's the size mini album that I was working on. And if I was say working on five pages or 10 pages, however many I'm working on, I'm going to select that many boxes and put them on here. This way I can choose my papers. I can see them next to each other. I can decide on elements that way. So this is just an easy thing for me to do. So here are five boxes. And again, the first thing is I start with my pattern papers. So I'm going to go up to the fill pattern window. 
And here are just the um, designs that came with my Cameo. So I'm going to scroll down. He, I'm going to work with the Ooh La La collection. The Unknit Whip Pond is absolutely adorable, but I've not worked with it yet, and I'm more familiar with the Ooh La La collection. So just to show you examples, I'm going to um, use that collection. So I'm going to go ahead and start choosing papers, just simply by selecting them. And I want to show you how you can get different looks from the same paper. So also I want to choose one of their solid papers um, because their solids even have a slight design in them. Let's see. So let me zoom in on this and just show you. So as you can see, it still has some sort of pattern to it. Again, let me zoom back out. I'm going to use these two as an example to just show you one of many things that you can do. So if you go down to your advanced options over here on the right, your scale pattern is at 100%. That's what the default is. I can move that up and look at the two different papers that I get from this. You can also rotate your pattern if you want to rotate it. So now I have a diagonal design. So again, you're getting two different looks. And if you wanted to move this pattern around within your square, select the pan pattern, grab this little piece in the center, and once you get that hatch cross, you want to move it around, you can get it exactly where you want. So again, these are the same papers, but two different patterns. Now let me go up here to this one. This one has a beautiful flower cluster at the top. I can, um, again, move the scale way up, say to about like 160. And now I could leave it just like that and it looks beautiful or I can pan it down. So I'm gonna select the pan pattern, grab that in the middle there and move it down. Now, as you can see, I get a totally different look. Again, I can rotate it, move it around. And now I have a cluster going diagonally across the top. So again, same thing, you get the the um, little roses here, which are absolutely beautiful. I can scale them way up. As much or as little as you want. So you're getting different patterns, different looks with your paper. So let's move on to the next thing. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to touch on is tracing your elements that come in the paper pack. The Cameo recognizes high resolution and PNG file formats. However, they're not going to come with cut lines, but you can simply add your own cut lines. Not all of them will be easy to cut. I'm using this as an example. If it's a very light um, element, so as you can see, let me zoom in. The edge of this is very light, so it's going to have a harder time reading the cut lines for that. So I'll show you a way to get around it, but let me first just show you how you do it. You want to go open the trace window, select trace area, go ahead and draw a box around your element, and now you want to select high pass filter. You want to uncheck that, and under threshold, you want to drag it all the way to 100%. What you're hoping to get is a solid yellow box and as you can see it is not solid. So let me go ahead and select trace outer edge because we wouldn't have it cut anything in the middle. So I've selected trace outer edge and this is a terrible trace so let me zoom in to show you and that's simply because it's such a light thing that we're tracing. So you have a couple of options. If you double click on them you're going to get all these little points that you can fix it yourself but there is no way that I would ever do that. So there are a couple of options. I'm going to zoom out a little. If it's a rectangle like this, you can take your knife tool and let me make sure it's selected. And if you hold down your shift key and drag it all the way across, it's going to keep it straight. And you can just delete this. And now I'll zoom in again. You have a perfectly straight line. When it comes to a rectangle like this, what I think is easier, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this altogether. This, by the way, is from the Hydrangeas collection. And now I'm simply going to grab my draw a rectangle tool. I'm going to, I can get 
really close in, zoom really in, or I can leave it a little bit larger and leave myself a white border. And now if you group it like this, it's going to cut out around your shape. So that's one way to do something that's a little bit harder to trace. Let me go back and choose another element. I know that I did the Eiffel Tower in the first um, video that I made the mini album. So I'm going to open that up and use that as an example for tracing. Again, you want to go up to your select trace window, select trace area, draw a box around it. I'm going to uncheck the high pass filter and drag it all the way up to 100%. That's what you're hoping to see. You want a solid yellow trace around your image. Now we have the choice to trace outer image or trace, but we don't want to trace the outer image because we want the center of the Eiffel Tower to cut out. So I'm going to select trace. I'm going to drag it away so you can see, and now we have a perfect trace for that. So now you have an option. What I like to do when I'm using an element like this is do several layers and it gives it a thick chipboard look. So I would leave this layer, I would actually put this layer back so it has the um, cut window. And a fast way to put it back instead of sitting there lining it up is drag a box around both of them, go up to your align window, window select center and then go ahead and group it. And that way you can print it out first and cut it. But like I said, I usually like several. So what I do is I just go down here to my duplicate window and say I draw out three of them. Let me move them aside. Then I would go back, draw a box around both of these, select center. I would go down here to group them. I would print and cut this out. Once that's done print, printing and cutting, I would just put these on my mats. You don't need to do a print and cut. And cut these out from either white or black cardstock. Turn it around so it'll fit. And again, put these on white or black cardstock and cut three of them out, glue them together, and then you get a chipboard look. So that's pretty much with all of the tracing. You're not going to get a perfect trace around real light images, but there are ways around it. You can edit it yourself. There are certain things you can do. Another thing I'd like to show you is how to customize your own tag. So I just have a basic tag here. This is a border for the back side. I'm going to set that aside for now. I chose one of the pattern papers from the Hydrangeas collection. And now I'm going to go and select a few of the elements. So I'm going to use this sentiment. Let me go back and grab a couple more elements. I'm going to grab a flower. And I love this border of flowers here. So let me move these aside. The first thing I'm going to do is resize this a little bit smaller so it fits at the bottom of my tag. And now I want to go ahead and duplicate that. You can just click on your duplicate window or right click and do it. And being that this is um, facing the same way and I'm going to put this one here towards the top of my tag. I want to go ahead and rotate that 180 degrees. So I'm going to flip that around and let me move that aside for a minute and show you something else. You can grab both your tag and my flower cluster down here and go to your align window and you want to select align center and it's going to center it perfectly on your tag. And if you're happy where it's at, which I, I'm going to move it down just a little. Now I'm going to grab both of these and group them. Now I can move it without worrying about that border. That border is going to be stuck to that for now. So I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to grab this border and this flower cluster, hit align center, and maybe I'll move this one up just a little. And now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to group those as well so I can move them around and not worry about losing my placement. So this flower, say I want this flower on here, I'm going to go ahead and size that down and maybe rotate it slightly. And now I can move this, actually the sentiment is perfect size. I can move it where I want. Grab it all together and group it. Now I can move it around and not worry about it. Now I could fill this in with a darker 
uh, pattern paper if I want, or I could fill it in with a color. And actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and fill it in with a color. I'm going to grab my eyedropper tool from the fill color window, and wherever you put your eyedropper on, you're going to get that color. So I'm going to go for the little bit, the darker pink here, and select it. So now, if I group those together, go back to my align center window, window and center it, I have a beautiful mat for behind my tag. And I could simply print it out that way and it would come out in one piece, or I can print and cut them out separate and layer them to get together to give it a little bit of dimension. So I hope that gives you a few ideas. Um, also, let me just show you if you were doing, say my example of a scrapbook page, let me draw out a five by five since we were using that earlier as an example. Fill it in with some pattern paper. So I could use this solid paper and then I could go and grab one of their sentiments and add it onto my paper. So let's say we want to do this. I can scale that down. And I could say put this here. So let me zoom in for you. So this is a way you can customize your own paper. I could also, so if I wanted to, I could also grab a flower and place it on here to make my own type of pattern paper. I could do ton, just this is pretty alone. And I could bring that to the front um, and make my own pattern paper or a journaling card if I wanted this to be a journaling card. I could also do a ton of little ones and what you would do with that is while it's highlighted, go ahead and do, say you want rows of four and make your own pattern paper that way. And then I could grab all of these, select duplicate below, duplicate below. So again, you can make your own pattern paper, do different stamps like that on it. Okay, I'd like to share how I make a pocket for my mini album. So again, using my five by five as an example, I have my favorite bracket edge, and this is one that um, I just have saved. How I got this is I used some sort of label. I don't know if it was this label or not. Let me zoom in for you. But any label that you have in your um, machine, I took the knife and holding my shift key, dragged it across. I don't need this part, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And now I have my bracket shape. So let me just get rid of that. So this is my favorite one. I keep this saved and I use this. Now what I want to do is I'm using, again as an example, 5 by 5 So I want to go up to my scale window. And I'm not going to worry about the lock aspect. Um, I just want to change the width to five inches, select apply. So now you can do one of two things. You can drag this down, but as you can see, it's going to distort your bracket shape. So what I like to do is just take a rectangle, draw one out. I'm not going to worry about the size right now, but I, or the, the height of it, but I am going to worry about the width. So I'm going to change that to five inches uncheck the lock aspect box and select apply. So now these are going to be the same width across, which is the same as my album page, my mini album page. So I want to grab these, go back up to my align window, select align center, and I'm going to select align top. Again, let me zoom in on this so you can see a little bit better. So there's my box, my rectangle, and my bracket shape. I want to just select the bracket shape and move it to the top of my box to where you do not see these corners anymore. So I'm going to drag that to where I'm happy with it. And now I'm going to select both of them, go down here to select weld, and now I have a pocket. So let me go over here, zoom out just a little. And actually, I'm really happy with this size. At this point, you could adjust the height of it if you want a different height. So you'll see me do a lot of these pockets on my mini album pages. That way you can enter, get a lot more photos in it, add journaling cards, whatever you'd like to do. So now let's say we want to add a decorative mat to the inside. Go ahead and select your pocket, go up to your offset window, 
and you want to select an internal offset. But before I do that, let me get rid of this black. I, I chose the black so you could see it better, but that might um, make it a little bit harder in this step. So I'm going to select internal offset and you can select as much or as little as you want. I would say that's a perfect border. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. I'm going to move out my inner piece, turn this back into black. If I was doing a black um, base album and now I'm going to select a pattern paper that will coordinate with this. So let's say I chose this paper that has this border on it. Now my paper's upside down. That's why the, the flowers are coming in at the bottom, which is what I was going to do with this anyway. So it saves me a step. I'm going to scale that up a little bit and now I'm going to pan the pattern, bring up the flowers and I kind of like it like that. And now I want to go ahead and grab both my pockets, go back up to my center, select center. And here is what it would look like on my page. If I didn't like this inside, I could simply go back and choose a different pattern to go in it. And now what I would do is I would cut this black one out on black cardstock and I would cut these two, the, I would print and cut these two and then it'll perfectly mat on top of my pocket. Also, I do have a very in-depth video on print and cut. It's in my playlist under Silhouette Basics and it's called Print and Cut. So if you don't know how to do print and cut, check that out. I also like making belly bands for my pages and I like doing both vertical and horizontal ones. So quickly how I do that is I size out a rectangle here. I'm going to make the height of it five inches and let's say I'll make the width, let's make it one and a half. <laughs> so now this is just to get my sizing correct and for for me to visualize what it's going to look like because I'm actually going to just cut that out by, with um, black paper. But I like to do this just to get my, like I said, uh, to be able to visualize it. So now to make it very simple, instead of drawing another rectangle, I'm simply going to duplicate it and change the size, the width of it. I'm going to leave the height. I'll change the width to one inches. So now I'm going to fill this with a pattern paper that matches this. So let's say I do this lighter striped one. And then if I was happy with that, again, I would just move this out of the way because I'd actually be cutting that out of black cardstock. And then I would simply print and cut those. I, this is an oval frame that I have and this is exactly how it comes. I'm going to ungroup it. I don't like the smaller scallop. I like a larger scallop. So I'm going to size down my oval a little bit, grab them both, go back up here to the center window and center it. So now that gives me a larger scallop. So the next thing I can do is move this aside, fill this in with a pattern paper, Let's say I go ahead and choose this rose pattern paper and say I want, um, well, let me grab both of them and select center. You want to go ahead and right click on it and select make a compound path. That will actually cut out just the outside of it. So now, as you can see, you have your pattern filled right in your frame and you can place this with a photo on the inside. Another thing I would like to explain, I'm going to go ahead and grab this flower here, the hydrangeas, and I'm going to zoom out. I want to show you here that Knitwit makes their elements large. So for example, if I had, I deleted it, but if I had a five by five page that I'm working with, I'm not going to worry too much about getting my um, size perfectly for just for an example here. 
but say I'm working with a five by five page. That's an awfully large element to use on my page. So they make them large so you can size them down and they will not be distorted. You can also size them up and they will not be distorted. But I recently had someone ask me about getting a, a low resolution warning. And I just wanna show you if you size it up too large, because this is meant to be a print and cut. So it's going to print it out first. You can size it up pretty large before you're gonna get that warning. Here is that warning up here. That's telling you, and that'll pop up, that it's low resolution. So it's not gonna be the, the best image that you can get if you decide to print it out that large. So you just wanna play with that. You can move it down. And now all of a sudden you can see how that warning is gone. So now it's telling you it'll print nicely. So that's one benefit of Knitwit collections is they purposely make them very large. So as you can see, this takes up almost a whole 11 inch paper. I also wanted to share that I do a lot of photo mats in my mini albums. So again, using this as my sample page for an album, say I wanted to do a large photo mat and I wanted to use the a more solid color background and then a decorative background. So if my page is five by five, I'm gonna go ahead and size these accordingly. So let's say I do a four by four mat for this one and then a three in, three quarter square mats. So now what I wanna show you, this is, this is how it would say sit on my page like that. What I wanna show you, um, you would need to print out your album page and then you would need to print out both of these mats. You could actually center this and print it out all in one and it would have this border around it, but I like the dimension. I like having different layers, but all of this, excuse me, all of the this here would be a waste of ink. So I just want to show you a great way to do that. If you were, if this is how it was going to end up on your page, let me make a duplicate so I can move this one aside. So if this is how it was going to end up on your page, you actually need to make this inside square a little bit smaller. That way, when you place this paper on top, you won't see that. So again, let me go ahead and center that. Now select make a compound path. Now when it prints out, you're only gonna use this much ink because in the end, you're gonna be placing this on top and placing both of these on top of there. So why waste that ink? So that is everything that I wanted to share. I really appreciate you staying with me on such a long video, but I did wanna cover as much as possible that you can do. And you can do most of all this stuff with whatever program that you want and just have fun with it. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. And remember to check out the coupon code that Knitwit Collections is offering. The information is in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching and thanks for sticking.